NASCAR's new charter proposal to teams has some really interesting things in it. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. NASCAR's latest charter proposal that was sent to teams a little bit over a week ago has some really interesting things in it. So as this news has started to trickle out, Adam Stern from Sports Business Journal has been posting some of it. And I think maybe the most interesting part of this is that there is a provision in the new charter agreement terms that were sent to teams that will allow a France family member to buy a NASCAR Cup Series charter. Previously, when the charters were introduced in 2015, France family members were barred from purchasing a charter. Now, they would like to be able to have that option to purchase a charter to race in the series that they also own. And that's a major conflict of interest. It's like working for a family business and you're not part of the family, but family members also work for the business and you wanna talk crap about it, but you really can't because you know it's going to get back to the boss. That's what's happening here. As a team working within NASCAR, while they're also owned by the people that own NASCAR, yeah, they're a bunch of narcs. Like nobody's gonna wanna talk to them. Nobody's gonna wanna hang out with them. And like I said, major conflict of interest. Now this does already currently exist with Jim France, the CEO of NASCAR. He owns a team that races in IMSA, which is also owned by NASCAR, Action Express. So now seemingly, we're just going to use Jim France as an example. Say he wants to buy a charter in the Cup Series and race there. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem because I don't think that the people that own the series should also be able to compete in the series. And we see it right now happening in IndyCar as well with Team Penske. Roger Penske owns IndyCar series. His team is the most powerful team in the series. And you have a lot of people maybe silently, but also at times being like, uh, there might be something fishy going on here. Some rule changes have certainly benefited Team Penske. Uh, last year's Indianapolis 500 with some unprecedented red flags certainly benefited Team Penske. And of course they did have a cheating scandal at the beginning of the year, which they got hammered with. So that's great, but it isn't enough to really quell the fears of people that think that favoritism might be in play here. And I think NASCAR needs to avoid that at all costs. And the team certainly don't seem that interested in it. About a month ago, we heard that NASCAR was looking to have this provision added and teams were like, eh, no, we'd like to you know, maintain some of the integrity for the sport, but now it's been included. And it'll be interesting to see how teams push back against that. I don't like it. I don't think that they should be allowed to own a team in the series that they currently own as well. I think, like I said, major conflict of interest, and hopefully the teams do push back on that. You can own a team, but you can't own the series. You can own the series, but you can't own a team. So you got to pick your battle here. I just don't think that they should be able to do that. Another big part of the proposal that was sent to teams is a cost cap. And now we've seen this happen in Formula One, and NASCAR has kind of you know mentioned this before, and it's really NASCAR's way of trying to get teams to cut more money, more of their budget out and try to save more cash. Essentially what NASCAR is, what's happening here is teams have gone to NASCAR again and said, we need more money out of this TV revenue. And NASCAR says, well, we think you could cut more funding out of your team, more money from your team, essentially getting rid of some employees or not doing you know, certain testing type of things, things along uh, you know, that nature. And teams have basically said, listen, we're maxed out. We're capped out right now. We can't, we can't run a more lean ship than we currently are running. We need more money. So a cost cap is kind of being floated around as a way to control cost. And I have some questions about this. Should a cost cap be introduced? Mm, I can see it either way. Formula One has it. It seemingly works pretty well unless Red Bull tries to spend over by saying that energy drinks and catering is part of their actual performance budget. But on the NASCAR side of things, for example, let's just say it's $20 million a car, just throwing out a hypothetical number. So a team like Hendrick Motorsports or Joe Gibbs Racing, that's now $80 million for the overall company with their four cars. So that's $80 million that they're going to have to do CFD, wind tunnel, a whole bunch of other sim work. A lot of things that a team like JTG Doherty, and they only have $20 million, can't do. Because you know the four car program over there, not all four cars are running the same testing programs. They're going to all test something different and then come back together and be like, here's the data that we saw on these cars, but you know, interchange it. So the cost cap has to come into play somewhere. And like there has to be some sort of happy medium in here. Uh, we don't really know how it's laid out. Adam Stern didn't have any more information on that. And I'm not sure if any teams are really willing to talk about that yet. Brad Kozlowski and Denny Hamlin both spoke last week at Gateway about this proposal that was sent to teams. Denny said there's a lot of work to do. Brad seems slightly more optimistic and said that there's certainly some things in there that need to be worked on. So, but he said he hadn't, you know, read over the entire thing yet. So he wasn't ready to give a full comment, which I can understand that. A cost cap, though, is an interesting proposal and one I think we could see come to NASCAR 
But at the end of the day, I don't love the idea of a cost cap because I don't love the idea of people being told this is the maximum amount of money that you can make. Oh, sorry, we can't go over this, especially at a time where race teams are having a really hard time finding employees at this point. The burnout's real and the salaries certainly don't meet, meet the amount of work that they currently have. I mean, if you're offered a job in racing and you kind of work within the realm of you know that field, you should just stay where you're at because you're going to make more money there more than likely, assuming you're in like a professional field and you're not you know changing oil at Valvoline or something along those lines. But you get the idea on what I'm saying here. And then maybe the most interesting portion of this proposal that was sent to teams is the fact that NASCAR has laid out rules for private equity firms to buy into a NASCAR Cup Series charter. And I've been waiting for this to happen because I think this kind of opens the floodgates. One thing about the wording, though, that I am actually really pleased to see, it says buy into a charter, not buy a charter, buy into a charter. So right now, let's do a little private equity um, overview. Right now within the big four sports, NFL, MLB, NBA, uh, and NHL, private equity firms can purchase up to 30% of a stake in a company. They can't purchase the whole company. And I think that's a really, or whole organization. I think that's a really good move. And I hope that's what NASCAR is going with here. Because if NASCAR were to open the floodgates and say that private equity could come in and purchase a full charter, we're talking about the Wild West here. This is a completely different NASCAR landscape in terms of what charter values are and sort of what the market looks like going forward. You're going to have teams like a Richard Childress Racing or somebody else being bought out by private equity firms. I mean, look what they did to Red Lobster. Private equity bought out Red Lobster and then blamed Endless Shrimp on it. Not the fact that they bought all these Red Lobsters and all the real estate that comes along with those, jacked up the rent and they're like, oh, look, you guys can't pay rent now. Yeah, of course not. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Private equity can come in, they can make a race team really good, but they can also go all Oakland Athletics on it and not care, not try. And then you end up like, you know, Jerry Reinsdorf's led White Sox, where you're just not relevant, not winning any games, and just collecting a check because, well, you'll continue to collect a check because you own one of those charters. So I think that would be a real, really big and unfortunate opening of Pandora's box if it were to happen. That's why I'm happy that it says buy into a charter, meaning they can only own a percentage. That's how I'm reading it, how I'm interpreting it. And I think that would be a step in the right direction. But it was only a matter of time before private equity and, you know, maybe public wealth funds made their way into NASCAR. We've already seen it in Formula One. The, uh, the Saudi PIF currently, you know, owns a part of the Aston Martin F1 team. The Bahrain Royal Family and their fund owns majority of a stake the majority stake in McLaren. And there's a couple other ones floating around as well. Doralton Capital owns, you know, um, Williams. So that's a little bit different than just the private equity firm. But you could have somebody like Bain Capital come in and try to purchase, you know, a NASCAR Cup Series team or three charters or something like that. And I don't think that's what we need right now. Being a partner, sure. Bring in some money, you know, an influx of cash, all for that. Definitely some teams out there certainly need that. Owning an entire team, don't love that at all. So let me know in the comments what you think about these three, in my opinion, pretty big proposals that are within the new charter agreement. And of course, teams still have to come to an agreement on them. It is worth noting that NASCAR is not like the other four major sports out there. They do not need a majority of teams to sign off on this for this agreement to go into place. If one team signs off on it, well, that's how it goes for that team and then it kind of works its way down the line and I think that's kind of what NASCAR is looking to do is do a little bit of union busting of the RTA and get one team to sign and then another and then have this floodgate open of people wanting to get in there to sign to make sure that they get a piece of the pie versus having all 15 you know charter teams agree to it at the same time so we're in a long waiting game here because there's still some work to do amongst the the RTA lawyers as well as the lawyers with NASCAR and trying to come to an agreement. So let me know in the comments what you think about these changes. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.